Uh, good afternoon from wherever you're joining us. Um, welcome to this session uh, hosted by the Commercial Agriculture for Smallholders and Agribusinesses, CASA. On behalf of CASA, let me welcome you all to this session. Um, this session is entitled Making the Case for Investing in Smallholder Poultry and Aquaculture Agribusinesses for Accelerated Growth and Enhancement of Food Systems in Malawi. As we proceed, let me briefly talk about CASA. Uh, CASA is funded by the uh, Commonwealth and Development Office, formerly known as GFID, and we thank them so much for funding this particular program. And uh, basically, we seek to increase global investment in the smallholder agribusinesses, promoting equitable commercial relationship while increasing smallholders' income food security, as well as uh, uh, climate resilience. How do we do this? We do this by demonstrating how this can be done effectively, uh, bridging uh, uh, Gap invest, uh, gaps for investors, but also showcasing successful business models. Just to mention to say, uh, as we do this, we would want to make sure that uh, investors and policymakers have the right information that can help them to invest in the two particular uh, uh, value chains that we're working in in Malawi. We are grateful to Accra for giving us this opportunity that we can host this session. And we believe that through this session, uh, investors as well as policymakers will access that particular information that will lead to facilitating profitable as well as the inclusive agribusiness models and investments in Malawi. Uh, in our presentations today, having accessed that particular information, we envisage that uh, that will help us and as well as uh, uh, the SMEs contribute towards boosting economic growth and raising the demand for smallholder produce. Uh, through the involvement of CASA in the AGRF, we have seen over the years that uh, we are able to reflect how we work, the diversity of our program in terms of we show that we support and inform investors with the right for information uh, for, uh, uh, for, and also to create that particular conducive environment for sustainable investment. Uh, in, therefore, uh, just to mention that CASA, among the many things that we do, we support SMEs invest, uh, uh, to help them secure commercial investments by supporting them in terms of the invest, uh, uh, investment readiness, and this includes development of strategic uh, uh, plans as well as business plans as well as investment plans. But we also support them in terms of increasing the participation of smallholder farmers. In this session today, we are going to have four panelists. Uh, we have a panelist that will talk about the case for Malawi as a, a destination for agricultural investment, but also we'll have three SMEs that will pitch uh, talking about investment opportunities in poultry, aquaculture, and then we are going to have uh, questions thereafter that you can have time to reflect and interact with the, the investors, uh, the, the SMEs. And having said that, uh, there is no better uh, way to start than to talk about Malawi as a case, uh, a case for Malawi as an investment destination. And therefore, let me welcome Felix, uh, who is going to talk about why people should come to Malawi and invest. Felix, over to you. Frank, I think we have uh, Pilira actually on, on the line. So, hi Pilira. Uh, we'll ask you, so you to start the video and, and I'll unmute you now. Yeah, B Pilira, please. Uh, welcome Pilira Kafagamoyo. She's the acting director for investment and promotion uh, at Malawi Investment and Trade Center. Pilira, please go ahead. And, and share with us why should people come to Malawi and invest. Thank, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. We can hear you. Would it be possible for you to turn your video on so that we can all see you as well? Okay. Would that, uh, 
Is that okay? That's yes, wonderful, that's thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, thank you, first of all, I need to thank you for inviting us to be part of this uh, very important forum. I'll just go straight to uh, share with you what MITC does and the investment opportunities that are there. Uh, as a way of uh, background, Malawi Investment and Trade Center is a statutory company that was established under the Investment and Export Promotion Act of 2012. The Act actually made two institutions, the, the, the then then Malawi Investment Promotion Agency, MIPA, and the Malawi Export Promotion Council, MEPEC. And uh, the core functions of MITC is to attract and promote and also to facilitate investment and trade in priority sectors that have been set by government. And we also act as a focal entry point for uh, both local and foreign investors. And we also facilitate investors through our one-stop service center. Uh, this covers the issues of um, immigration permits, like processing the investors, taking the investors through the investment process itself. We also provide what we call aftercare uh, services to investors and exporters that are registered. Basically, this uh, aftercare service uh, is a service that we provide um, to the registered investors just to understand what are the issues that are affecting their dairy operations. And these issues, uh, we also identify, we're able to identify investment opportunities, but we also, um, there are other issues that investors raise that need to be uh, uh, sorted out by government. So we also uh, identify this through the investment, uh, I mean, through the aftercare. We also process and issue investment certificates to investors that are operating in different sectors. And we also brand Malawi as the preferable investment destination. Uh, MITC, we, through, we facilitate the investors through, as I said, uh, the one-stop service center. The one-stop service center, it houses four uh, government institutions. We have the Malawi Revenue Authority that help us to guide investors uh, on issues relating to tax incentives, but also they help us to provide information to investors on the procedures of accessing incentives that are applicable in different sectors. And also they help us to provide guidance on the procedures of uh, creating of goods and also facilitating investors to register the, for domestic taxes. We also have the registrar of companies. Uh, they also help us to guide business registrations uh, in accordance to the Companies Act. And also they help us to facilitate the business registration itself. We also have the Department of Immigration. They provide uh, guidance on immigration requirements and also guide investors on what, is, uh, on what type of permits uh, they have to fall under. We have the business resident permits and the temporary employment permits. And also we have, they also help us to facilitate um, the processing and issuance of these immigration permits. Then we have the Ministry of Lands that help us to identify and allocate land for investment purposes. And also they help us to guide uh, investors on, on land matters and also facilitating the land acquisition process. In addition to this, uh, we also have other services that are provided uh, by MITC. Uh, we link investors to financial institutions. We work closely with different uh, financial institutions. So if we identify investors that would need uh, financial assistance, we link them to such financial institutions. And we also identify um, joint venture partners there are some investors that come to us and they say, okay, they are looking for joint venture partners, maybe in the managerial side or on the financial side. So we do uh, assist in identifying and uh, linking this joint to the venture partners. As I said earlier on, we provide the aftercare uh, services to those that are operating under our investment certificate. And we also facilitate the investors through the investment process itself. We also provide what we call business uh, clinic trainings. These are trainings that are provided mainly to those that are in trading. Uh, our trade department, they once in a while uh, identify uh, 
like SMEs that need to be trained on. Uh, we had this, uh, I think the past two weeks, we've had it in Blanta, we also had it in Lilongwe and also in Zuzu. Um, investment opportunities, as you all know, we promote the priority sectors. Uh, that is the main sector is the agriculture and the agro processing. Then we also have other sectors like the energy manufacturing, tourism, infrastructure development, and also in the mining sectors. Uh, in agriculture, uh, Malawi being an agricultural base, there are a lot of opportunities that are offered. That is both in the agriculture itself and also in the agro processing. There are opportunities that we are promoting in the commercial farming in uh, plantation agriculture, for example, the macadamia nuts, the rubber plantations, and there are also opportunities in, to add value to crops such as the soya products, to produce the soya products, uh, to add value to cotton, uh, processing of the pigeon peas into dal, processing of tea, sugarcane products, and other value chains like in the uh, grain legumes, the horticultural uh, crops, the livestock and the fisheries, and also in other crops like the roots and the tubers, like the cassava, the Irish potatoes and the sweet potatoes. Um, there is also the upcoming crop, the uh, industrial hemp, the cannabis crop, that is also uh, providing a lot of opportunities so people can grow and also process uh, these. And again, to mention that um, MIT, uh, Malawi government through MITC, uh, they are establishing the special economic zones. Government has allocated land, uh, four sites, where these special economic uh, zones are going to be uh, established. That's in, this, uh, in the south, we have the Matindi and Chukumura area. And in the, in the Leongo, we have the area 55, then we have in the, in the north, there is the Dunduzu. So there are other opportunities as well to uh, develop and also to, uh, to develop and also to, to manage the special economic zones. I think for now, uh, if I can stop there, if there are any questions, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Pilila, uh, uh, for that wonderful uh, uh, sharing. Uh, setting the tone about investment opportunities in Malawi. Uh, Pilila, uh, there are questions, but then we'll have a, a special time that we'll take questions after all the, the panelists have spoken. Uh, she has, uh, Pilila has spoken, he has talked about number of uh, value chains, but for the sake of this particular uh, sharing, we'll talk about um, uh, two particular value chains that CASA is focusing on. And therefore, uh, let me move forward to introduce our next pan, uh, panelist, uh, Maya Stewart. Maya Konja Stewart, she's the managing director of Lens Emil. She co-founded uh, co the company together with her husband, and she's going to talk about, um, you know, opportunities uh, in aquaculture. Maya, over to you. Thank you very much, Frank. Good morning and good afternoon, Africa. My name is Maya Stewart. I am the co-founder and managing director of Lenzimil. Next slide, please. Lenzimil is a family-owned business operating as an independent feed mill with 50% female and 50% male ownership and one co-founder as youth. Lenzimil aims to address the existing supply gap in the livestock feed subsector by offering highest quality and competitive animal feeds for smallholder and semi-commercial livestock farmers nationwide. Lenzimil aims to address three major market gaps in the livestock subsector, including firstly, quality and pricing challenges as other players producing and offering animal feeds in the market are integrators and compete with their customers directly. Secondly, disparity in innovation in business models as integrators focus on themselves and disenfranchise smallholder farmers and SMEs through monopolizing the market, resulting in missed opportunities in achieving inclusive impact. And lastly, other subsectors like aquaculture have no local feed manufacturers and solely depend on imports, which is highly unsustainable for the country's forex reserves. Lenzimil addresses these three gaps through the following solutions. Firstly, 
expanding market share for poultry feeds via expansion of an inclusive proof of concept egg hub model. Developed and expanded regionally and internationally by Lens Mill founders, the egg hubs improve availability and accessibility of nutritious, fresh, and locally produced eggs in rural communities. Lens Mill supports smallholder farmers with high quality inputs, training, access to finance and markets. This is coupled with social marketing campaigns to create mass awareness of eggs amongst mothers and pregnant and lactating women. Ultimately, Lenzimil wins with continued and consistent demand for its poultry feeds with the expansion of the egg hub model. Secondly, Lenzimil plans to roll out production of floating fish feeds to address the lack thereof and stimulate Malawi aquaculture sector for expansion. And finally, Lenzimil plans to invest in innovative and inclusive demand creation models for fish feeds. Following the success of the egg hub, Lenzimil would set up fish hubs to expand fish production and subsequently demand for fish feeds. Our current product portfolio is predominantly poultry feeds, which has been certified by MBS, Malai Bureau of Standards, and has a reputation of high quality. Our feeds sell out quite fast and often, uh, and our current production sits at 1,500 metric tons per annum at full capacity. With the recently procured equipment, which is expected in October 2021, Lenzimil will be able to produce both poultry and other livestock feeds. We plan to expand into floating fish feed production as the equipment comes with an extruder and our capacity for poultry feed will increase 16 fold with simultaneous capacity to produce 4,800 metric tons per annum of floating fish feed. Finally, we are exploring the establishment of fingerling production to address market shortages and ensure feed mill capacity is not disrupted due to lack of fish to feed. Our target capacity will see 3.5 million fingerlings production whose outgrow will cover at least one third of the fish feed capacity in your new equipment. Lenzimil raised finance in 2021 and procured a high capacity feed milling equipment valued at $390,000. This comes with increased capacity of animal feed production that will result in opportunities to sustainably boost fish production in Malawi, increase production to meet demand of our poultry feed sales, opportunities to expand into export markets, opportunities to enter fingerling production, and subsequently opportunities to adapt the egg hub model into the aquaculture subsector. The new equipment will also give us the chance to explore other new product offerings due to excess capacity, such as creating import substitutes in domestic animal and other livestock feeds. Ultimately, we anticipate increased production of fish and using our egg hub model, Lenzimil plans to explore value addition of fish and thereafter exporting all new product offerings into the region in response to Africa Free Trade Agreement. Presently, Lenzimil sees traction in both the poultry and fish feed product offerings, especially with the incoming equipment. We can now actively expand the egg hubs countrywide as a result of assured capacity to meet increased demand for smallholder farmers for poultry feeds. With focus on egg hubs, our current capacity will increase from 1,500 metric tons per annum to 4,000 metric tons per annum, excluding sales to semi-commercial and non-egg hub customers. With the introduction of fish hubs in Lake Malawi's Chipoka region, a total of 35 smallholder farmers have been recruited who will take up at least 200 metric tons of floating fish feed per annum. This demand coupled with Lenzimil's future own fish production via cage culture and demand from other commercial players, the anticipated target of 3,000 metric tons of fish feed per annum is anticipated. Lenzimil appreciates its com competitors in the animal feed sector. However, our strengths lie in the investment of the egg hubs on the poultry feed product offering, where integrators are not interested to venture into, as the hubs are direct competitors. Meanwhile, with imported fish feed vat removal, Lenzimil has been flexible enough to move its operation to the southern district, which is far from port of entry for cheap feed in the central region, and coincidentally, closer to the lakeshore region where commercial aquaculture activities take place, and close to Mozambique where there is export demand for all animal feeds. Lenzimil has ambitious yet achievable goals in the medium term. Aside from immediate, immediately producing floating fish feed for the retail market of Malawi, we anticipate expanding the egg hub into the southern and northern region of Malawi to boost poultry feed demand as well as set up fish hubs for both cage and pond fish farmers. Next slide, please. We are adamant in investing, in, in investing into fingerling production and in the long term expansion into cage fish farming on Lake Malawi. Lenzimil is seeking blended finance in the form of grants, equity and debt to cater for expansion goals 
Medium term, we are seeking about $800,000 for expanding the egg and fish hub, where $200,000 has already been secured as grant and interest-free loans. We're looking for partners who can invest in our business, both equity and debt, with $1 million for working capital for the feed mill and another million dollars for commercial cage fish farming. Finally, we're looking for debt financing to set up the commercial fish hatchery capable of producing 3.5 million fingerlings per annum. Our debt request would have a maximum of 10% interest rate and payback period of four years, whereas equity offering is up to 20% of the business. Lenzimal accounts have been quite healthy since the commencement of the business operations in 2018 to end of 2020. We have been cash flow positive and maintained a good balance sheet. Despite the impacts of COVID-19 last year, which impacted our profits, we foresee improved revenues and profits in 2021 and beyond as a result of the increased capacity from the new feed mill plant. Furthermore, we should, should we achieve this investment ask that I've requested, we anticipate increasing turnover by 400% and attaining sizable profits as our overheads will only increase in the new product offering of the fingerling production and cage culture activities. Most overheads in our egg hub and current poultry feed business will only see an increase in distribution costs as we ramp up feed sales nationwide and for export markets. Our balance sheet will also improve due to new assets procured and increased liquidity. Next slide, please. The expected social benefits we anticipate from the new equipment will see more raw materials demand from smallholder farmers in the form of soya and maize, impacting 2,000 smallholder farmers on the supply side. With the expansion of the egg hub, an additional 50 groups will be set up, therefore impacting 300 farmers on the demand side. We also expect a conservative 20% improvement on smallholder farmers' incomes from our baseline figures. From the aquaculture sector, we foresee 1,400 pond fish farmers having consistent and affordable high quality feeds for the first time, with potential to improve their production output by 50%. Most importantly, local fish feed production presents forex savings for Malawi to the value of approximately $3.3 million per annum. Ultimately, from a business perspective, the increased capacity results in increased revenues and subsequent uh, profits. I would like to thank you for your attention and your time. Yeah, thank you so much, Maya. Uh, that was powerful. And, uh, and thank you for sharing the investment opportunities in fish feed as well as My pleasure. feed. Thank you so much. Thank and um, uh, to the audience, uh, uh, Maya will be available to respond to any other question uh, after uh, the other panelists. So, and she also, you know, she can also share some more information in case you need uh, more information about Lindsay and the ask and what their growth plans. Thank you so much, Maya. Um, as we proceed, uh, we want to stay in uh, investment opportunities in aquaculture by looking at uh, another different uh, product. And uh, that will be shared by Florence Mangonde. Florence, uh, go ahead and share with us investment opportunities in aquaculture and what Vipya Chambo is up to. Thank you so much and welcome uh, Mrs. Mangonde. Thank you. Good morning from Malawi. Um, Mrs. Florence Mangonde, Managing Director for Vipya Chambo. Vipcha Jambo is a family business which started from a humble background of one fish pond measuring 300 square meters. Initially, the pond was meant to produce for home consumption after we discovered that the land we procured was not doing well for crops. The soils were waterlogged. So we, we decided to have one pond. The catch was too much for home consumption. So we decided to sell some. We sold in no time. Later on, I and my husband, we got excited with the positive feedback that the fish was so tasty compared to the fish from Lake Malawi. Then we constructed four more ponds. That is in 2012. We kept expanding. And in 2015, we had a total of 12 ponds on 2.5 hectare. Currently, Vitra Jambo has 13 ponds on 3.5 hectare. Next slide, please. The company identified two gaps. That is fresh trapia and fish seed. The demand for fresh trapia is expected to grow from 25 metric tons per annum to 40 metric tons by 2025. 
hence an opportunity for Victor Jambo. But also we looked at the fish seed fingerlings. Victor Jambo is the only producer of quality fish seed with Madepo only producing for its own use. Next slide, please. The company is expanding its sales through smallholder farmers on and off the arrangement. We piloted with 72 farmers, most of whom are women. But right now, we have already identified 550 smallholder farmers. Medium term, we are looking at working with 1,800 smallholder farmers. We are also looking as, at expanding our production of quality fish seed. The fish seed will be for the contracted farmers on off-take arrangement, but also for other SMEs and commercial producers. Next slide, please. Those are the company products. That is fresh trapia and fingerings. That is fish seed. Next slide, please. As I pointed out already, the company will raise its revenue through the offtake arrangement. That is, will increase from 600 smallholder farmers short term to 1,800 medium term. And we also increase fish seed production. The demand for fish seed is growing to 60 million fingerlings per annum by 2025. Next slide. The company produced 800,000 fingerlings this year. If we get the investment, it will help us to increase production from 800 to 2.5 million fingerlings by 2025. These fingerlings will be for the smallholder farmers on contract arrangement for the other SMEs and commercial producers. Next slide, please. Currently, there is a shortfall of 25 metric tons per annum in Mzuzu and surrounding areas. Proximity to the market ensures that our product is fresh and that maintains taste of the fish and compared to other fish products. There is very minimal competition on fish seed, with Madego producing a few that they cannot even satisfy their own demand. We have public, public hatcheries that do not produce sex reversed seed that our company produces. Our quality fingerlings has a high growth rate as ever evidenced from the pilot model. Next, please. As investment, we are asking for, the company is asking for an indoor hatchery. The indoor hatchery will help improve survival of the fingerlings from 50% pond based to 90%. We are also asking for floating feed meal. As you know, feed cost takes up to 70% of the total production cost. The floating feed that we produce will be for the smallholder farmers on the offtake arrangement and for the company. This will help us to cut costs by 40%. Currently, there's no floating feed, floating fish feed in Malawi. The feed is imported from Zambia. But also as the company were looking for a for three-ton freezer van to save the 600 smallholder farmers on the off-take arrangement. Currently, we have one ton freezer van. Next, please. The company is looking for 178,000 US dollars short term. But he, Medium term, we are looking at 500,000 US dollars. Victor Chambo will use the money to procure the three more vehicles that we, we need to serve the 1,800 smallholder farmers. We are also going to procure 
we wish we procure another floating feed production line with a production capacity of two ton per hour to save the 1,800 smallholder farmers. Vicky Chambo prefers impact investor with soft loans. Next slide, please. If we look at the benefits, the smallholder farmers on the off-take arrangement will benefit from the fast growing seed and the reliable market translating to more income in their pockets. But there is also ripple, ripple productivity and income benefits to smallholder farmers and commercial producers that will buy fish seed from Zipcha Jambo. Of the 72 smallholder farmers that, that are on our off-take arrangement, 50, more than 50% are women, and a good number of them are youth. We, we, we impacted economically through better prices during the off-take arrangement. But also, if you look at the environmental impact, globally, carbon emissions from fish are comparatively low compared with the environment cost of red meat, such as beef and lamb, which is estimated to range from 50 kilos to as much as 700 kilos for carbon per kilo of meat. But also we look at fish as a healthier protein with omega-3 compared to beef at omega-6. Thank you so much for your time and for your listening. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Uh, Florence Mongonde. Thank you so much uh, uh, for that particular uh, 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 pitch. And um, you've clearly described the products that you're working on. And, um, and the, uh, the audience, uh, Mrs. Mongonde, is also available for further engagement and interaction even after this session. Uh, so if you have any other question for Mrs. Mwangonde, please type in the chat box and then we'll have time to interact and to engage with her after our next presentation. Uh, so next to pitch is the, the director of uh, Nyaruanga Farm. So we are moving into pottery value chain. So let me invite Cecilia Amstedega. She's a passionate businesswoman who is uh, um, part of the managing, uh, she's managing Nyarwanga Farms. So let me not preempt what she's going to say. Let me welcome uh, Mrs. Cecilia Seteka. Share with us the investment opportunities in Portray. Go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Cecilia Mseteka, and I'm the managing director, founder, and owner of Nyarwanga Farms. It is my pleasure and privilege to take you through this presentation on Nyaluanga Farms. Nyaluanga Farms is a poultry farm based in Choma Agriculture Area, Mzuzu, in the northern region of Malawi. Malawi is comprised of three regions, namely northern, central, and southern region. Mzuzu is the main town in the northern region. Lilongwe, which is about 354 kilometers from Zuzu, is the main town in the central region. And Blantyre, the main town in the southern region, is about 606 kilometers away from Zuzu. As you can see, these details are important to provide context on the dynamics with, within which uh, Nyaluanga operates. Nyaluanga was established in 2012 and registered as a company in August of 2014. We started our production in 2015 with only three chicken houses. And over the years, we have expanded production and now have seven chicken houses with a production of around 19,000 chickens per cycle. Annually, we have around uh, six to seven cycles which amounts to approximately 133,000 chickens a year. We expect to increase production by another three chicken houses over the next three years. This will increase our production by approximately 57,000 per year. Next slide. The larger players in the poultry industry 
are situated in the central and southern regions of Malawi, which as mentioned earlier, are quite a distance away from Mzuzu. Nyaluwanga farms, day old chicks and the feed come from these companies. And this makes the end product uh, more expensive because this now, you know, uh, incorporates transport costs. In the short term, next slide, please. In the short term, Nyaluwanga Farms is looking to invest in a feed mill to allow the company to use that feed for its own chickens, thus bringing down the production cost, as well as selling to the other people and companies in the northern region. We estimate that this will reduce, reduce our feed uh, cost by approximately 30% and make it easier for people in the region uh, to access affordable feed. This also will provide us with a good stream of extra income. And this will in turn expand our business through our inclusive um, supply chain involving smallholder farmers who will benefit by having an income and reduce hunger in the process from the soya and the maize that will be they will be supplying to us. Next slide. In the medium term, we want to upgrade um, the abattoir and increase the freezing capacity to accommodate all the chickens that we'll be buying back from the smallholders. And our long term will be to broaden our access to day old chicks by investing in a hatchery. Nyaluwanga Farms aims to double its chicken output within the next two years. Our main products are live chickens, frozen chickens with their chicken parts, and manure as a byproduct. Next slide. Our business model includes the smallholder farmers who will be supplying us with soya and maize for feed. The maize and soya that we'll be getting from the smallholder farmers will be used for our feed production as well as selling um, the, the chickens that will also, they will be producing for processing. This provides the smallholder farmers with a ready-made market for their products, whilst enabling Nyaluwanga farms to produce feed for its consumption and to sell to the other farmers in the region. Nyaluwanga farm will also process the chickens from the smallholder farmers increasing its production and the capacity to stock its outlet shops. Nyalwanga Farms will actually be the first company, next slide, will be the next company, um, first company to invest in a feed mill in the north. Um, if we have our feed mill, hatchery and abattoir in the northern region, we will have a potential to make more money to serve Muzuzu and all the surrounding districts with affordable poultry input. And this will increase our revenue steadily. We've, we've had a steady increase in the last uh, few years by about 10%. Um, in 2020, the, the, the production went down a bit due to COVID. But we have seen that now we are steadily increasing our revenue. So this is a good sign for us. Nyaluwanga Farm will be the first company to invest in a feed mill, a hatchery and abattoir in the northern region with potential to serve Mzuzu City and all surrounding districts with affordable poultry input. To our competitors are Central Poultry, who are in the north, in the central and southern region, as well as Kel Foods, who are Proto. They are in the southern region. So you can see uh, what I was talking about, that our input comes from very far. So with all the um, transport added onto this, it actually makes our products more expensive. So it would be nice for us to have our own 
production of uh, feed, as well as uh, the chicks within Mzuzu, which is in the northern. To achieve all this, uh, Nyaluwanga Farms Limited, whose equity is 739,300 dollars, uh, we are looking to getting an investment of 175,000 with a payback of about five years. As the demand for chickens is relatively stable with frequent turnover, the investors may be rest assured of the viability of this business venture. I thank you very much for your attention and please, do feel free to ask if you have any questions. Thank you so much, Celia. Uh, that was quite good. And thank you for uh, elaborating, you know, what uh, Nyalwanga Farms is doing currently and they cross the plan and uh, they ask to boost as well as to grow from where you are currently. Thank you so much for that uh, wonderful presentation. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Uh, now we'll move into plenary where uh, we can interact with the, our panelists. Uh, I already see questions in the chat box. Uh, and if you have a particular question that you want to ask, you can raise your hand and then I'll be able to notice you. But first, let me go to the chat box. Um, I will invite Pidila. There are two questions for you uh, from the chat box. So, uh, Belila, if you, if you were around and then there was a question uh, that, that was asking about, uh, you know, uh, what is the criteria? Uh, what are the, uh, the question from Stafford, Francis, what are the aftercare services by examples, please? Are there eligibility criteria for the same? Uh, let me invite Belila, are you around to just briefly I know there's so much information that is available on the website, but uh, just some a minute or two, would you mind to respond to that? Idira? Thank you very much, Frank. Uh, for the aftercare, the first thing is that the, you have to be registered with MITC uh, because this is uh, offered to those that are operating under the investment certificate. So the criteria is that one has got to have an investment certificate and also at least one has to be on the ground, at least starting to uh, put up the business or they are actually operating. That's the main criteria. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Pilira, for that elaborate. And um, just to mention that Pilira is also around, then we can engage her with her uh, uh, separately uh, if you want more information. The other question that is coming to you, Pilira, is um, from Sylvester. He's asking, what are the capital requirements to be allowed uh, to uh, as an investor in Malawi? Uh, the minimum at the moment is 50,000 US dollars in the priority sectors that uh, government has said. The ones that I mentioned, like the agro-processing, agriculture, mining, but the minimum should be 50,000 US dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pidira, for that. Uh, the next question in the chat box is coming from uh, sorry if I misspelled your name, Cyrus, um, is uh, going to Maya. Uh, he says, a wonderful presentation. In Liberia, we have a challenge of portfolio feed despite very promising sector. How can government de-risk subsidy in portfolio feed? Through what window could such subsidy be sustainable? Maya, do you mind to unmute and then if, uh, respond to that particular question? Thank you, Francis. Uh, sorry, Frank. Um, I think the, the, the question here is about subsidizing, um, you know, how can government incentivize? And I'm, gl I'm glad that we've got um, the likes of MITC also on the phone um, or in this call. What I could say is that you need to have a government that is also proactive, similar to what uh, Pilira mentioned, what MITC is doing, encouraging people to invest into the sector, 
giving them tax breaks. Um, one of the things that an investor is is always um, uh, you know supported by government is giving them opportunities to get tax breaks and making their their production processes much cheaper. Um, from a fee perspective, the way that or how Malawi has really helped us, uh, the government rather has helped us, is ensuring that we have a big um, supply side of, of raw material. So things or raw material such as soya and maize is abundantly pro pro produced in the country. And that's the reason why I said on the supply side, we are already supporting a lot of smallholder farmers, but it requires government uh, to invest in that uh, subsector. So on the supply side, you need to make sure that the basic raw materials for any poultry feeds are readily available. Um, if you have maize, if you have, uh, if you've got soya, um, I'm sure in Liberia, you probably work with cassava or even sorghum. These are all uh, ingredients that can go into poultry feeds. I would like to also emphasize the fact that um, any, any kind of feed actually um, on an animal perspective should not compete with the uh, I want to call it um, food security, and we need to make sure that both are being uh, sustainably sourced. So if we're talking about a country like Liberia, I'm, I'm assuming you possibly are in investing in, in cassava. Don't go and invest in cassava and the poultry sector comes in to try and take on that um, the production that is there for, for human consumption. Instead, you need to work with government. The government needs to work with the private sector to boost productivity to ensure that you have enough raw materials uh, to manufacture um, the poultry or any other animal feeds for that matter. We also encourage that you use byproducts. For example, some of the byproducts that we use in poultry feeds is uh, soya cake. So this is after you've processed the, the soya to get your oil. We use soya cake um, in, in as adding protein into the feeds. We also use other byproducts such as rice bran after rice milling, um, wheat bran, uh, as well as sunflower cake after pressing it for oil. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you so much, Maya. Uh, uh, it shows that, uh, you know, the passion that you have and the massive experience that you have in the sector. Thank you so much uh, for that. And I can already see the, the further engagements uh, with the, the, the participants. So looking forward to that. Uh, next question goes to Mrs. Uh, Cecilia Seteda uh, from Evangelista. Uh, he, she is asking, um, I'll, Mrs. Cecilia, I would like to know how you and your outgrowers brood your chicks as well as the source of heat for use. Over to you, Mrs. Mstetega. Okay, Thank you very much. Um, well, we have been training the smallholder farmers in how they can look after their chickens. So what we've actually done is that um, when most of the people in the rural areas use the local chickens for production, but that is very difficult um, and it takes long for the chickens to mature. That takes about five, five months. So what we've done is that we're training our smallholder farmers in how they can do free range chickens using the broilers. So this gives them um, seven weeks, at least for them to be able to get income quickly. And um, on your question on how we uh, warm the, the um, keep the chickens warm, is we've taught them a way of uh, keeping the chickens warm by, well, not using charcoal because that is not allowed in, in, in Malawi. So we're using gas and um, gas now is readily available and they're able to buy the small cylinders which uh, cost just about 50,000 kwacha. And um, that is what they are using. So we are trying to sustain and make sure that trees are not chopped willy-nilly for them to keep those chickens warm. Um, I hope that that answers the question. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Cecilia. You know, that also shows the passion and the, the vast experience in this industry. Thank you so much. And I hope our, the participant, you know, you, you, you've uh, you responded to. If you need further clarity, Mrs. Mstetega, she's around that you can reach out. Um, uh, moving forward, thank you so much for the information on the chat box shared. 
Thank you for Farid, uh, uh, Farid from Iran for sharing your details. I'm sure our panelists will be able to get in touch and other participants also on the call. Uh, thank you so much, our panelists, for sharing that particular information. Uh, next uh, person comes from Emmanuel. She is asking all the panelists, uh, what are the strategic sustainability mechanisms you have for in place? What are the strategic mechanisms that you, you have put in place? You, you know, uh, so uh, this goes to all our panelists. So I will uh, just give you a minute uh, to respond to that particular question. What are some of the examples of sustainability uh, mechanisms that you have put in place? Let me start with you, Maya, one minute, and then uh, Mrs. Mangonde, and then Ms., uh, Mrs. Cecilia. Thank you, Frank. Um, from the perspective of sustainability, uh, one of the things that we had to do to make sure that the company is not impacted, I think I mentioned it in my presentation, uh, not being impacted by uh, VAT removal um, from fish feeds, we were able to move our activities from the central region down to the southern region. Um, and one of the things that we need to make sure that we put a focus on um, because Malawi is predominantly a landlocked country. We are a net importer. What we are trying to also do uh, from a manufacturing perspective is to boost our exports um, within the country. We have the capacity now with our uh, new equipment that has been procured uh, to now manufacture, to feed the entire country, so to speak, and anything in excess, we would like to enter into the export market. That will make not only our business sustainable because we do have to still import some items, um, some raw materials, such as the vitamins for the animal feeds, and that requires forex. And if the country does not have accessibility to, to forex, we will be challenged. Therefore, we need to create that model whereby we are able to export get some forex that will allow us to then in the future purchase other commodities but also at the same time um, improving our forex reserves in the country thank you thank you so much maya thank you so much um it's the mrs Mangonde, just a minute what are some of the strategies you have put in place as i already pointed out in my presentation we are looking at working with smallholder farmers upscaling each and every level to make sure that even though our land is not adequate, we can scale up our production by working with the smallholder farmers. But also we are looking at increasing production of fingerings. We know the demand is rising each and every time for, it, for fresh fish as well as the fingerings. But also our main source of fish is the lake. And we are aware that the fish in the lake is dwindling every and every time. So we are upscaling our production through off-take arrangements, but also raising our production of fingerings. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Mrs. Zinseteka, a, a minute, please. Mm -hmm. uh, please unmute your mic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What we have done um, with Nyaluvanga Farms is working with uh, smallholder farmers as well. It's going to give us a lot of the um, you know, production that is required. Um, right now, we are not able to um, manage the demand that is there for um, poultry because, you know, poultry is a cheaper source of uh, protein that is required by, you know, for health reasons. And um, so in order for us to be able to sustain and be able to uh, um, feed the, the nation, we have involved smallholder farmers who will be able to, to help with that. But apart from that, um, we are also increasing our production so that we are also able to um, provide the country with chickens. We're not only going to look at uh, the, the northern region, we're looking at um, expanding our business. And um, the good part with the production of the feed that uh, we said we'll be getting um, the input from the small scale farmers as well, 
is that Malawi produces soya. We produce a lot of maize. So a lot of the ingredients that we're going to need in order for us to reduce um, the cost of production by producing our own feed, this is going to come from within. So we have an advantage on that. So that is what is going to help sustain uh, Nyaluanga farm in expansion. Thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you so much. Uh, in just some 30 seconds, there is a question here. Are you also looking at the regional and international markets in terms of your expansion plan vis-a-vis -vis, vis -vis the, the competition from countries like um, uh, 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 Brazil? Well, um, yes, but first of all, we would want to, um, you know, make sure that Malawi has enough. And after that, yes, of course, we can, we, we will look at uh, expanding. And what will, what will differentiate us from the likes of Brazil and so on is that, you know, with mass production and what we are producing, there is a difference because our chickens will definitely be the best so let me thank you all. Uh, thank you so much, our, our uh, panelists, for sharing with us your pitches. And thank you so much, uh, Pirila, for sharing us with us information about MITC. And uh, please, you're also welcome to the Malawi, Malawi presentation that you can learn more about MITC. And thank you so much, our investors, our distinguished participants, for participating in this particular knowledge session. Uh, and then let me assure you that the questions that you're asking on the chat box will be responded to even after this call. Thank you so much for your attention and we look forward to engage with you further uh, beyond this particular session. Thank you for your attention and thank you for your attendance. Bye for now.